Yes. Hello, everybody. This is Howie Hawkins. I'm here with Vitaly Dudin, who is the one of the co-founders of Solzioni Ruk, or it's called the Social Movement in English. Uh, he's an activist and a labor lawyer here in Ukraine. And uh, Vitaly, talk to us about the uh, origins and how Solzioni Ruk got organized. Социальный рух was established in 2015 as a democratic socialist organization by representatives of student communities, labor trade unions, feminist activists. And it was established after the Maidan revolution in 2014 when uh, the corrupt oligarchic uh, regime of uh, Viktor Yanukovych was uh, overthrown and the uh, people uh, understood that uh, there is a demand for more radical changes in Ukrainian society to make uh, Ukraine more prosperous and stable country. So uh, overthrowing uh, all the regime was not enough to um, uh, to solve all the problems that Ukraine had. Uh, but from the other side, um, we had no left uh, movements. Uh, all the um, uh, left parties like Communist Party of Ukraine uh, collapsed because it was uh, it was discredited because of its uh, ties with uh, Putin's regime because of its connections with uh, Viktor Yanukovych regime. So uh, all the uh, leftists, they had no trust in Ukrainian society. So we decided that we should uh, change the situation and we should start from the below. We should start from the ground. And we organized the social ruch as a political force which can um, help people to protect their rights today and uh, to give them voice, uh, to give them representation in political uh, uh, system in the future. Uh, so uh, we are grassroots uh, organization uh, but we have uh, very ambitious political aims to regain trust to socialist ideas which uh, were uh, discredited so much after traumatic Soviet experience and after uh, imitation of uh, uh, left uh, politics uh, by such uh, pro-Russian forces as Communist Party of Ukraine. So talk about some of the issues You've been raising uh, inside Ukraine domestic issues uh, with things like the labor laws being changed and uh, social programs being funded in the context of a war, which makes all these things difficult. So what, what's been First your... First of all, we should understand that Ukraine is still in uh, transition from the planned economy to free market economy. And uh, it means that uh, we still have a lot of uh, regulations that came from the socialist period, uh, such as uh, labor legislation. Um, of course, the uh, Soviet Union was not a democratic state, um, but uh, according to its uh, political declarations, it uh, approved a lot of uh, progressive uh, regulations which uh, provide um, social protections for um, working people. And uh, uh, we still have a labor code of Ukraine uh, adopted in the 70s. And uh, it provides uh, very strict uh, protection for uh, um, workers uh, and gives a lot of uh, powers to trade unions. Um, and the uh, a lot of Ukrainian governments and politicians tried to uh, replace it with more um, neoliberal uh, labor code. Um, and those attempts uh, uh, were from the beginning of 2000s. Uh, but uh, 
our class enemies they haven't managed to do this reform because uh, mm, this reform had uh, limited legitimacy uh, yes it, it was illegitimate, illegitimate and it was not uh, considered as socially fair because uh, oligarchs had uh, already had a lot of powers and the salaries of people were very low so uh, the need for um, need for more comfortable regulations for employers um, appeared uh, to be very i don't know uh, unreasonable yes so uh, until the full scale invasion um, labor relations were um, governed by this uh, labor code from the 70s um, but with uh, plenty of amendments which were made um, during market transition um, but uh, it is remarkable that uh, after uh, the russian invasion um, the first uh, um, actions of our government in social spheres they were not about uh, bringing more social protection to people but they started from cutting labor rights and they introduced a law on uh, organization of uh, labor relations uh, during the wartime uh, law number 2136 so um, it uh, looks like um, the painful uh, anti-social reforms they uh, were not introduced um, in normal uh, in normal uh, times when uh, we had the uh, democratic uh, principles in order but this reform came um, in the emergency situation um, and we hope that this uh, rollback is temporary and the Ukrainian workers will um, regain the right to strike to uh, protect uh, union members from dismissal and to bargain uh, freely for example with uh, employers because uh, those rights they are suspended to according to this emergency regulations um, but in general um, we still have a lot of guarantees that can be useful for people to protect their uh, right to decent life to uh, payment of wages and to occupational health and safety and people can uh, protect their rights in uh, courts for example uh, courts are still uh, operating almost all over ukraine without territories where we have hostilities uh, but we have a problem with systematic enforcement of uh, labor legislation because labor inspections uh, they do not work in ukraine effectively um, they have limited powers and it is uh, not in compliance with um, european standards and uh, rules of international labor organization mm. so mm, the main issue that i want to mm, to tell you it is that uh, ukraine it is a country with uh, different uh, social uh, um, conflicts uh, and uh, people trying to protect uh, their um, interest um, opposing to the uh, interest of uh, corporations and the uh, oligarchs um, and I, I think that uh, this class struggle of uh, oligarchic capitalism against working people was uh, um, successful only partially but not totally because we still um, have uh, a lot of uh, rights it sounds like the shock doctrine are you familiar with that naomi klein's book how the capitalists introduce reforms when they're crises and this war sounds like you know the opportunity 
that the oligarchs got to uh, roll back some of the labor protections. So in fighting back against that, um, are you restricted by the government in speaking out, demonstrating? I mean, what's political activity like during this wartime? Of course, our opportunities are limited because officially all public assemblies, they are prohibited. Yes, but in reality, they still occur. People from different cities, they gather the assemblies on the streets and they protest against the limitation of their social and civic rights. Uh, for example, this year, on the 1st of May, on uh, International Workers' Day, we uh, joined the um, rally of uh, um, workers uh, in the mining sector in the city of Krivoy Rih. They uh, um, organized a protest for the uh, higher wages on Arcelor Metal Krivoy Rih. It is the big metallurgical plant and is a part of um, global corporation ArcelorMittal. Uh, and it was safe because uh, police uh, uh, haven't uh, asked people to finish this assembly uh, because uh, demands of uh, people were uh, socially and moral, morally uh, reasonable. Uh, this is how, how it works. Uh, and also people can go to uh, court um, to uh, solve some dispute. Um, yes, we have a lot of uh, anti-social uh, laws which were introduced during the martial law, but part of them they're being uh, under revision of constitutional court of Ukraine which is still uh, operates and I think that uh, some of the most brutal limitations of uh, workers' rights, they can be cancelled by a constitutional court. Also, we can uh, do appeals um, to the government, to different ministries um, and other uh, bodies, but I think that the most um, effective instrument of influence is uh, international solidarity. We are so dependent on the reaction of uh, international uh, workers' movement mm, on what is happening in Ukraine. Uh, so when we see the danger of some extremely devastated uh, reforms, mm, we ask for support of international uh, community to make uh, some kind of uh, statements. Uh, on solidarity with uh, us, and it can preclude um, the wars. It can stop uh, our um, officials from from promoting some um, anti-workers uh, actions. Yes, so it it is uh, how we work, and as a so and as a political group, as a leftist group, we always trying to explain that all uh, problems that we have uh, they are um, originated from uh, this political system under which we currently live. Uh, cutting of social rights uh, it is uh, a result of a neoliberal system uh, which uh, is ready to sacrifice uh, our rights rights of ordinary people first. If they face a crisis, they start from uh, cutting the rights of ordinary people. And I think it is how it happens in every uh, country. Um, and uh, maybe it is a specific scene of Ukraine that we have no uh, powerful left movement on the political level which can balance the system. All politicians, they are tend to be right-wing politicians. 
for example, ruling party, Sluha Narodu, or uh, servant of the people, is uh, comprised uh, of different people with different views, but uh, most of them have uh, neoliberal views in uh, social and economic issues. Uh, so, of course, it is a big uh, threat mm. uh, because system is not balanced by representatives of uh, different views. Mm. The majority belongs to one party, which is definitely not uh, social democrat or even centrist. It is a right-wing party. So. Those of us in America looking at the situation here, you're talking about your struggles with the neoliberal government under conditions of a Russian invasion. So what kind of solidarity, you know, concretely do you ex want from Americans? You know, from speaking out to material aid, you know, what, what, do you, what would you like us to do? Uh, I think that you um, can... Uh organize different international campaigns to satisfy uh, all needs of Ukrainian people in uh, uh, self-defense, first of all. We need uh, constant uh, military support. In that uh, case, we can uh, save as much Ukrainian lives as possible. So Ukraine still needs arms because our system is not so uh, effective in uh, responding to the challenges of war. Um, of course, we are trying to um, criticize our course of, of our government uh, and we want uh, the system to be replaced to another which is uh, based on the principles of uh, social, uh, socializing, of uh, critical infrastructure, defense industries, and uh, the system which uh, can make possible mobilization of all financial resources to uh, fulfill the needs of frontline. But uh, without uh, elections, without freedom of assemblies, it's too difficult to change the, court of, uh, the course of our government. Um, that's why we are working inside Ukraine on uh, preparing the working class for political struggle, but we need to save uh, the sovereignty, the independence and democracy in Ukraine. That's why we need more um, military uh, support, including long-range uh, missiles. Uh, and uh, also we need financial support. Uh, we want uh, uh, to achieve uh, financial assistance which will not result in uh, indebting our country. So we hope that the uh, financial uh, assistance will come in the form of uh, grant without any kind of conditions for example, and uh, it will not make uh, Ukrainians more poor. Uh, and also, uh, we need uh, to share the information about the situation in, in Ukraine, because it's too complicated, and uh, sometimes geopolitical uh, analysis is prevailing over um, analysis of concrete uh, social relations in Ukraine. I think that a lot of people um, who are looking at Ukraine abroad, they judging on some um, general issues, but they not taking into account uh, the interests of Ukrainian people. Uh, they don't look uh, in uh, everyday life of uh, Ukrainians. They ignore the contradictions which exist in Ukrainian society. As I told before, we have very sharp tensions with the uh, oligarchic class, which uh, tries to um, make their 
to save their profits despite uh, all uh, changes um, yes and people are uh, trying to challenge this uh, system so um, there is a big uh, um, demand for uh, more progressive po uh, politics uh, and uh, I, I think that only framing this uh, battles in the right way can help to understand situation better uh, it's not black and white we have uh, a lot of um, reasons to criticize our government and we really uh, do so because they are uh, ineffective in um, challenging uh, some uh, systematic and public uh, problems like energy deficit, like uh, ammunition deficit, like lack of uh, workforce, like unemployment. Our government, which is led by simple uh, market-based ideas, is not uh, effective to solve those problems which are very serious for our people. So uh, I uh, hope that uh, leftists in, in the world can do more to uh, involve in uh, Ukrainian politics by communicating with us, by asking what we are thinking about that and that. So I think that uh, sharing the truth about the real situation in Ukraine uh, will be very um, helpful in uh, providing more support for Ukraine and uh, fighting against the Russian misinformation. Okay, Vitaly, I appreciate the interview. Um, on that last point, um, you know, one of your colleagues said you're fighting both Russian tanks and Western banks. And I think, you know, you've brought that across. You're facing military aggression and you're facing economic domination by a neoliberal agenda from the West. And uh, that's complicated, but it's not that complicated. You know, I think, you know, leftists in the West should get it instead of buying a simple narrative um, that, you know, Russia was provoked by the U.S. to invade. The U.S. made him do it. Um, we have a comedian uh, who used to do a skit about, he'd, he'd dress up as a woman and say, she would do something wrong and she'd say, the devil made me do it. And uh, when I heard Putin give a speech about uh, Satanism in the West making him invade Ukraine, that's what I thought of. It was, uh, he just looked silly. So, uh, I just want to uh, scan the offices we're in. This is a meeting room for Sotsioni Group. They're, they're, uh, that's their flag and their uh, logo. And I just go around the room, you can see, you know, they've got room in here for, you know, a meeting of, you know, 50 or more people. And uh, so this is where they're based out of, and there's a side room over there for people to meet. So. Uh, this is their headquarters, and uh, once again, uh, Vitaly, thanks for doing the interview, and we'll get this to people, and, and the last point you made was we need communications, that's, that's why we're doing this interview, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your questions, and uh, I, I want to add that we are fighting not only against uh, Russian tanks, and Western banks, but also we are fighting against Ukrainian oligarchy. And uh, we think that it is uh, another uh, source of power, yes, with its uh, internal interests. Yes, so our struggle is very difficult, uh, but uh, with a big uh, international solidarity, with a big support, I hope that we will manage and in that uh, case if Ukraine will win it will be the victory of Ukrainian people and then Ukrainian people will uh, have a full opportunity 
to uh, change uh, the situation in Ukraine. So this war, it's a big challenge, it's a big threat, uh, but uh, I hope that it uh, shocked the Ukrainian society and make, made it more stronger because people uh, became uh, become um, more united and they think uh, more globally that's why i think that uh, this shock can uh, result in uh, more powerful grassroots uh, structures uh, which will uh, end the rule of neoliberalism oligarchy in ukraine and the ground for having that struggle you're going to be better off under the Ukrainian government than under Russian occupation, right? The, the repression will be a lot more. Uh, I think that uh, living under Russian occupation gives um, no uh, freedom for any kind of uh, speech or assembly. It, it means uh, totalitarianism. It is the same a level of freedom as in a concentration camp like gulag uh, or prison uh, that's why f for us uh, russia uh, it is uh, not a country that uh, possess any kind of positive alternative to the western capitalism it's about uh, pulling the world uh, to the past uh, to the time of feudalism uh, monarchism and the open imperialism if uh, anyone doesn't get it so you you should to uh, contact us <laughs> yes to explain uh, those uh, o obvious uh, things so uh, russia today it's not the progressive uh, alternative it's uh, um, semi-monarchist uh, state uh, which is uh, living under the uh, cult of uh, leader, the, under the cult of uh, violence, uh, and uh, is thinking in uh, the way how to annex uh, other uh, countries with uh, people instead of solving its own uh, problems. All right, uh, let's stop there. I appreciate the interview and uh, the message, and you know, we'll get this circulated in the United States.